We've talked about AMD CPUs. We've talked about future AMD CPUs potentially coming out. We've talked about 40 series graphics cards that are coming out. We've talked about Intel CPUs that are coming out. Now it's obviously time to talk about the Intel GPUs. Due to its AMD Ryzen 6000 series processor, IPS QHD Plus 240Hz screen, and RX 6800M discrete graphics, the Voyager A1600 from Corsair is a no-compromise mobile computing powerhouse. Voyager also features Slipstream wireless integration for Corsair Slipstream devices, Cherry MX mechanical keys with Capellix per-key RGB programming, and integrated Stream Deck software, the Voyager A1600 from Corsair changes the way you do mobile gaming and creation. To see the complete feature list, follow the sponsored link in the description below. All right, so let's talk about the uh, Intel Arc graphics cards here real quick. We actually get to show it today, which is actually kind of fun. That's what's in these boxes right here. But I'm gonna make you wait, because we need to talk about the architecture and stuff. When the A380 came out, not the airplane, the graphics card, it was extremely underwhelming. But you have to remember, what Intel was doing was they were showing a proof of concept of a design architecture that they were working on. And Intel Arc, the team running Intel Arc, is extremely talented. Uh, both engineers, software designers, driver designers, from all parts of the industry coming together to try and bring a third competitor to the market, which is only going to bring good things as long as they can compete with the maturity, product maturity of NVIDIA. I use that word loosely in terms of the entire organization, but I digress. And AMD. Uh, remember, AMD bought ATI and Ra uh, Radeon graphics years ago, and then kind of ran it into the ground, and are now like, had been fixing that over the last couple generations. So the ARC architecture though, initially got a very sour response from the audience, and the reason for that is because you are very used to seeing brands launch something new from the top down. You guys are used to seeing NVIDIA just flex all of its muscle. Well, most, 95% flex because they saved that last 5% for the real price gouging of the TI model of the top tier. You guys know how that works. AMD being the, uh, the other guy across the gym who's starting to get real gains, and then the guy that's got the gains like Nvidia starts flexing even harder, and then it turns into like a bro show, and then the third guy shows up who's like super skinny, but then you start seeing like, oh my God, this guy's actually got something going for him, and we're scared of him in the future, and that's kind of where in Intel is, because as those guys are over there flexing all their muscle, Intel's like slow and steady wins the race, and so as you start seeing the product stack go from the bottom up, you start really realizing that there's something there. Now, this isn't full access to, to all the details. We haven't even got a chance to fire it up yet. In fact, we, weren't even, we don't even have drivers or anything yet. So we are using their charts here, which are very, again, you, the same thing we say about Nvidia and the same thing we say about AMD when it comes to graphics card charts. Take it all with a grain of salt, wait till third party testing is done. But I think a lot of the sourness, I just wanted to kind of get this out of the way, comes from the fact that people are so groomed to seeing top down product releases that you're not used to seeing a bottom up one in a brand new segment never existing before within a company. So today we're gonna to be talking about the ARC A770, A770 Limited Edition, and the ARC A750. So what are the differences here? Well, obviously the ARC A750 is a little bit shaved down version of a 770, just like any product stack would be, but they're both still aimed directly at 1440p gaming performance. And the graphics card that they have their target set on, or their, their sights fixed on, is NVIDIA's RTX 3060. Now that's a, that's a big, that's a tall order if you think about where the A380 was last year in terms of performance. I mean, nobody had anything really positive to say about it. And I think it's, it, it shows a lot, of, a lot of courage from Intel uh, to, um, to, to start there with trying to get people hyped about it. But I'm glad to see that they're continuing on. I think it's smart for them to really target the 60 series buyer because we, we know that on the Steam uh, product like uh, survey, the 1060 was like the most popular card of all time ever, period. And then the newer like uh, 2060 really started kind of taking a chunk of that. 3060 not adopted quite so much because again, super inflated during all the, the, the 2020 and beyond shortages and stuff. But they know the 60 series buyer, that's the main buyer. Most people are not out there shopping for $1,600 4090s or even $1,200 2080 Ti's and such. They know this is where people are looking. In terms of power draw, they're both 225 watt part. It's like half of a 4090, but the performance is probably half as well. But that's not their target demographic right now. Uh, let's talk about the difference between the A770 Limited Edition and the non-Limited Edition. So the Intel Arc A770 Limited Edition is an Intel product. 
that is their in-house design. I don't want to say, I don't want to call it Founders Edition, but that's kind of like where it would be in terms of either Founders Edition or the Frontier Edition. Remember when AMD had Frontier Edition because they wanted FE, but they had to, there was a whole lot of trolling that was happening there. It was actually quite funny, but it also really just annoying to watch. It's like two siblings that just won't stop. So the limited edition A770 from Intel features 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 at 17.5 gigabit per second. Um, that is on a 560 gigabyte per second bus, which is funny. If you're one of those bus nerds, I don't mean people that have like a bus pass. I mean, you actually are like, oh, Intel, so NVIDIA is only doing 192 bit bus. You know, uh, then there you go, there's your big bus. Um, they use an eight pin and six pin power. And then the Intel special edition one has the RGB edge lighting and the RGB lighting inside of the fan will only be available from Intel. That is the, that is the Intel in-house built card. But however, they will be available from AIBs and the standard uh, the price on that, by the way, is $349. So compared to like a 3060 coming in on a medium price, a mean price, and what I mean by mean is like the middle, because if you go on like Newegg or Amazon, you shop 3060, they're as low as like $369 and as high as like $469. So the mean price in there is right around 390. And I believe that's the price they're using in their charts. But there's an eight gig and a 16 gig. Uh, eight gigabyte though might be a hard sell these days. 1440p, probably fine, but it really depends on the title. But if we start looking at um, the price to performance here, the average graphics card price in the segment they're showing here is $418. And I'm thinking that might be the price they're actually using uh, for the RTX 3060. Yeah, the average price is $418. So that, that's what they're using for comparison. And they were like, full disclosure, we did use the starting at price of $329. So you are comparing the eight gigabyte card, which I, I think is actually kind of neat to see to the 3060 brings a 42% better performance per dollar on the A770 non-limited edition eight gigabyte card versus the RTX 3060 and a 53% better performance per dollar versus 3060 on the ARC A750. So both of these products are, are aimed directly at 3060, 1440 card and 1440p gaming, which I think for most people is perfectly fine. If you're a 1080p gamer, this is gonna be an amazing card. Now, interestingly enough on the chart here, they show versus the 3060 um, Intel ARC A750 graphics. This is a 750 versus the NVIDIA RTX 3060. They compared it in DX11 only, DX12 and Vulkan and normalized to a 3060. So they basically compared this to a normalized 3060. If you normalize that, whatever that performance for that title was for the 3060, that's one. That's what number one is on the left. And then you can see what the performance per dollar is. So it's a weird calculation. That's why it'll be interesting when we get to actually see FPS because you can have lower FPS than a product, but if it's significantly cheaper then the performance per dollar is higher. So that's why I say chart gate because we, if there's one thing I think average consumers really hate and that's trying to discern these charts during these launches because they literally have to be putting everything in the best light. A778 gigabyte versus the 3060. I mean, you look at performance per dollar, it's higher in everything except League of Legends in DX11. But again, that doesn't mean higher FPS. It just means you got more FPS for the dollar you spent. So if it's 33% less expensive, but you're getting 48% more performance per dollar, the math tells you that it's higher FPS than a 3060. So again, we have to get our hands on the cards, which we have, check. We have to plug them in and start testing them, which we can't do yet. It's, a, it's an interesting time to be alive here especially in 1080p gaming with ray tracing. They're showing, again, relative performance versus a 3060 of up to as high as 1.56. It's, it's, it's 1.56 versus one of a 3060 and whatever that's 1.56 of, I don't know, because it just does 1080p gaming ray tracing. 1440p with XSS, which is Intel's version of like a DLSS or like an FSR, um, from AMD, it's called XSS, XESS, XSS. Ghostwire Tokyo, 2.11. So again, I don't like these charts. I just really, really don't. Enough of all that. Their configuration they showed here, they were running on an Intel 12900K on everything. It's just obviously it was an EVGA RTX 3060 XC gaming. So that was, you know why I'm happy with that? That's a cheaper card than like a Founders. So that makes their performance per dollar claim even better because if they were to like, let's take the most expensive 3060 we can find and compare it with our entry level pricing, then that's just making the, the gap wider, which doesn't, which is not very transparent of a story. But if they took the XC 
3060 EVGA XT, which is among the cheapest 3060s out there, there might be something to actually be excited about here. Enough of that. Let's get to the good stuff. Oh, it literally it pops it out. Like, no one's down. I have not opened this yet. We just undid the. That's actually kind of clever the way they did that. I like unboxings like this because so when you open it, it pulls a little flap, which makes it like, uh, like ascends out of the. So. Nick, we need a knife. It's still sealed. <laughs> True. I didn't open it. I save it for the videos. I rarely do unboxings. That's why when we do it, I want it to be an experience. All right, so let's go and talk about the minimum spec requirements and stuff. On the box listed here is a PCI Express compliant motherboard with one X16 PCIe slot. A, six, a 600 watt or greater power supply with one eight pin and one six pin. Eight gigabytes of system RAM, 10th gen Intel core processors or newer. An AMD Ryzen 5000 series or select AMD Ryzen 3000 series processor with compatible, compatible AMD. Windows 11, 64 bit or higher, or Windows 10. That's weird that they're requiring such a high CPU. Okay, here we go. I'll let the camera see it before I do. It smells like new shoes. Still smell it. It smells like new shoes. We'll kind of get to the card in a second here. I want to see what else came in the box here. So let's play. This is a retail experience, I believe. Thank you for choosing Intel Art Graphics, designed to take your gaming and creation to the next level. The card, it, the card, it's the card itself. It's it's like that soft touch, rubberized kind of a material, almost like you'd find like a car dash or something. It's very soft which is really awesome. And you know what, this is the this is the A750. This is the lower end card. Look at the backplate. Isn't that like one of the nicest looking backplates you've kind of ever seen? The heat sink, all anodized black. It's got that kind of a chrome finish on there, so I've been handling it, so obviously it's got fingerprints and stuff on it. I mean, even the IO shield on the back, the matte black, looks so good. You know what's kind of triggering, triggering me right now is if you look at the PCI Express plugs, one's like a lighter black than the other. Let's take a look at the uh, A770. Dimensionally, I bet you they're exactly the same. So, uh, a little tag on there. They're pretty much dimensionally identical. Um, you'll notice that instead of a chrome ring around the edge there, it's got this translucent RGB ring. Uh, you can see that same ring underneath where the fans are. This one still has the plastic on here, on one of them anyway. Uh, but what you'll notice right here, there's a little plug cap right there, and I won't take it off because I don't want to lose it. This one comes with this guy. This, is an RGB plug that connects to USB. So this is for controlling the RGB. When I saw this in photos, my first thought was, why did they put it there? And I think it's because they're just sort of expecting you to run it along the power cables. But you could have put it back here or somewhere kind of out of the way so you don't have another cable to have to deal with managing there. I get a little gripe of mine, but Overall though, the, the cooler design is so clean. Like even on the backplate fill, check this out. This little ring will light up right here. This, this just looks a lot like the, like the trim lighting that you see in new cars. I have interior lighting with RGB, how they have just little lines and trim everywhere. So a little warranty sticker right there between the backplate and the main card. That way they can tell if you've taken it apart. Technically in the United States, it's illegal to void a warranty because someone took the thing they bought apart, but they still want to know if you took it apart. But uh, there you go. Initially when I saw these, I was like, oh, this is boring looking. This is actually a really refreshing, clean, clean design. I cannot wait to see what happens when they really truly mature this product. So there you go, guys. There's your Intel A750, special edition or limited edition and A770 limited edition. Cannot wait to fire these guys up and see what they have to offer, especially at that like average buyer price point. <laughs>